Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. The dust has barely settled on this staggering turn of events involving Tyson Fury. I mean, I know it's only a co-promotional agreement with ESPN and Top Rank, but no one saw it coming and really the implications of it are large. Not only is an Anthony Joshua fight seemingly more re remote now, but Tyson Fury has strengthened his grip on a potential fight, a rematch with Deontay Wilder and getting more of what he wants. And obviously it would have to be on ESPN exclusively from what ESPN top rank and uh, Frank Warren of Queensbury promotions are saying. So I just wanted to get into a few more of the uh, threads of this sort of step back and look at how we got here and what it all means, because think about it a year ago, Tyson Fury was nowhere. He wasn't in the sport. He was thinking about a comeback. He was training. We didn't really know if it was going to happen. The comeback hadn't even been confirmed in respect of a new fight date, a comeback date. There'd been lots of talk, lots of, we, I'm coming back, but the date kept being pushed out. Eventually, he did come back in June. So Deontay Wilder, he fights Tyson Fury, a guy who many of us thought was not quite at his best or wouldn't be at his best on December 1st. And a lot of people speculated that is why Deontay Wilder chose to fight Tyson Fury, because he thought he would potentially be caught short on the comeback and would be an easier touch than he otherwise would have been. Tyson Fury boxes really well. Uh, ultimately, it's a controversial draw. Many people thought that Tyson Fury won, although Deontay Wilder knocks him down twice in that fight almost knocking him out some believe he was knocked out in the 12th round but he gets up he beats the count from jack reese he survives talk of a rematch is immediate and deontay wilder goes whole hog for the rematch wilder has had all his eggs in the rematch basket right from the get-go from after that draw Within a couple of days, he is all he's talking about is a rematch with Tyson Fury. And Fury doesn't necessarily commit to this immediately. And he sends out some signals sort of saying, well, I could look at maybe, you know, Joshua and Wilder fighting and maybe I fight the winner. But eventually he comes out with a video and says, I'm training for a rematch. I'm coming for you, Deontay Wilder. I won that first fight. I'm going to beat you the second time. I'll be better the second time. But Deontay Wilder very much so invested in the rematch, sole focus on the rematch. And I noted in some recent videos that that could potentially leave him a bit vulnerable at the negotiating table because effectively he cut off the Anthony Joshua stuff, wasn't interested in negotiating that fight. He was only looking at Tyson Fury in a rematch and neither had to fight each other, neither had to do a rematch, but it made a lot of sense. This was the fight that they should do. You know, there was unfinished business. People wanted to see it again. I wanted to see it again. I want to see what's going to happen and get a definitive result because there was a bad taste in my mouth from the draw. A draw is never an ideal situation. And given the controversy, I mean, you know, we just got to see it again, run it back. But because Deontay Wilder is so invested in a rematch, potentially hobbling his other options, even though he's been talking about, well, I can fight, you know, other people for two years in the PBC stable, you know, those are not fights that people necessarily want to see at this point in time. If he's not fighting Anthony Joshua for Undisputed, which, you know, quite a few people want to see, it's got to be the rematch with Tyson Fury. And Fury knows this. He's been using this. And this is some of the stuff that even Frank Warren has talked about that, you know, they're trying to negotiate a better deal than the first time around because Deontay Wilder was the commercial A side in respect of the purses. He had a bigger cut of the pie than Tyson Fury. But perhaps ESPN and Top Rank, looking at the situation, the landscape, and remember, they don't have too many top tier heavyweights. They have Kubrat Pulev, who they've recently signed also on a co-promotional deal with Epic Sports and Entertainment. Um, Ivalu Gotsev and John Wirt, they run that company. Uh, also, they have Bryant Jennings, but he's just lost. They've got Guido Vianello, but he's 2-0. He's a ways off. There's a couple of other guys who they could bring in for some fights, but they're a bit threadbare at heavyweight, which is one of the premier boxing divisions within all of boxing. Top rank must have sensed that there was an opportunity here because Frank Warren revealed to the media that this deal, this co-promotional deal they've struck with it between Tyson Fury, Queensbury Promotion, his company, and Top Rank and ESPN, that 
it, the basis of this agreement came together very quickly inside the last week to 10 days. And that, it, you know, a week or 10 days ago, it hadn't really been on the table. So from what he's saying, effectively, it did come out of the blue. An opportunity arose and they've managed to get a deal done and strike this co-promotional arrangement and keep it quiet until this announcement at the BT Sports studios. And Frank Warren himself has stated in respect of negotiating a rematch between Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder that he feels they are now in a much better position than they were just a week ago. Obviously, we know that they're getting close on a deal or had been getting close. The purse bid had been delayed twice. We were hearing that it was getting close. They've uh, negotiated this deal with top rank and all of a sudden they seem to have more leverage. And it seems to be that Showtime is now out in the cold. And Frank Warren has said a deal won't be done on Showtime or Wilder's terms. So what does that mean? What can be maybe renegotiated or changed or what has to be done now to get a deal over the line? Obviously the broadcasting part of it is a big part of it now because Top Rank and ESPN, they are part of Team Fury now. Uh, in the United States, two fights a year deal worth reportedly $80 million. But I, I do think we just have to be careful about banding around some of the figures because remember, Elidia Alvarez, he recently signed a seven-year deal with Top Rank and effectively it was voided after his first loss to Sergei Kovalev. It wasn't going to be the deal that he'd originally signed up for. So there could be some outs here for Top Rank and ESPN depending on results. But on the face of it, the headline deal, 80 million pounds, I should say, which is effectively $100 million. That is what is being reported. And I'm sure there would have been some sort of meltdown at Showtime headquarters because an event which would have been a big money spinner for them, it's effectively been ripped away. And it can only be on ESPN according to the details that have been laid out by both Top Rank and Frank Warren, exclusively fighting on ESPN in the United States at least twice a year. This is Tyson Fury. And some have suggested perhaps Showtime can get a piece of the, the action, be part of the broadcasting arrangements for a rematch. And Shelley Finkel, Wilder's manager, he said as much and he's hoping that you know Showtime can be brought into the tent. And even if that's the case, well, it is a poor consolation prize because they would be the junior partner in that equation. It would just be a piece of the action, not the whole American pay-per-view market pie, or, you know, effectively the whole pie as they've previously had before, and no doubt would have been expecting again. This has been ripped away from them. So I'm sure Steven Espinoza of Showtime is probably not in a good way at the moment, not feeling too good about what has happened here because it's come out of the blue and really it, it's a bolt from the blue. And Frank Warren, very bullish in his interviews, all coming up Frank Warren, very optimistic of an improved position, negotiating position for Fury, um, better than they otherwise would have got without this deal. And it does give them some more leverage here because like I mentioned before, Deontay Wilder has been very invested in this rematch. It's effectively been the rematch or bust. And it'd be a very big disappointment if he was to go off and fight someone else now because they couldn't get a deal done. But I guess the next question is, this thing has been ordered. The WBC has ordered this rematch. So this sort of late in the game sort of surprise, which has given some more negotiating power to Tyson Fury and Frank Warren, and obviously top ranks involved now with Bob Arum. What does that actually mean in principle? Because if they can't get a deal done, it still goes to a purse bid and there will be a 60-40 split. And maybe Deontay Wilder and his team will push for that because it is a 60-40 split in his favour if it does go to purse bid. I guess the um, the danger with purse bid is if it goes to a purse bid and top rank doesn't win it, well, what happens then? Because Tyson Fury wouldn't probably wouldn't take that fight if he can't fight on any other network except ESPN. So yeah, Deontay Wilder has already said, well, he's okay if it goes to a purse bid because he's got a 60-40 split. And you'd imagine if it goes to a purse bid with the interest in this now, some big money's going to be put up. Deontay Wilder's probably going to do okay financially. And Deontay Wilder, who's been out publicly saying uh, this ESPN deal is not a barrier. Well, I guess that we're going to have to really sort of see now if that really is the case. Because the what next will truly reveal whether Deontay Wilder can fight on ESPN. Deontay Wilder says, there is no barrier. I'm a free agent. I can go wherever. I don't have long-time TV deals or arrangements or anything like that in place. I can fight wherever, whenever. 
But his advisor, Al Heyman, will he want him to go that route? I guess if he has to, if it means dropping the belt, Deontay Wilder is going to fight. I don't believe he will give up the WBC title because if he gives it up, you know, he really loses his marketability to a big extent. He will go back to smaller fights, you know, without a belt on the line within his own stable. It wouldn't make any sense to drop the belt. Deontay Wilder isn't a big enough star to drop a belt and sort of continue making, you know, $10 million or whatever he made for his recent, most recent fight. Whatever the reported figure was, because they've been all over the place. But this move from Frank Warren and Tyson Fury, ESPN and Top Rank, it's a big time move. And it does have the potential, given Frank Warren, you know, has worked with Finkel over a long period of time. You know, they've been working with Finkel, Wilder, Heyman, everybody else associated with that. You know, this deal was kept quiet. It could potentially strain some relationships, something chronic. Some friendships could be lost or at least, you know, damaged to some extent. But at the end of the day, these guys are all about business. And, you know, you've got to respect, while there might be some annoyance with what's happened and they might feel a little bit gazumped that it's come out of the blue and that it's a, a different paradigm to what they expected, the fact that they've managed to maneuver into an even stronger position, you've got to admire that and respect that to some degree. Ultimately, though, will it play out in their favor? Because there is some variables. Because if this goes to a purse bid and someone like a DAZN picks it up or Showtime outbids ESPN or whatever, then the fight probably doesn't happen. And if they don't fight each other, who are they going to fight that fans will find that acceptable? Because you can't just have Tyson Fury fighting an average level heavyweight at this point, given where he's come back from, where he is now, and what he's just done. And that kind of goes for Deontay Wilder as well. But if Deontay Wilder keeps his belt and that doesn't get made for whatever reason with Tyson Fury, well, there is, as he says, options within the PPC stable. There's the Luis Ortiz rematch. A lot of people would be interested to see that run back again, given how close it was the first time. There's Adam Kovnatsky. That fight could happen. There's also a couple of other names within the PBC stable who could emerge over the next couple of years and be in line for a title shot. Oscar Rivas is a name. Andy Ruiz Jr. sort of lurking in the background. He's now with PBC. And maybe in two years, if a Jagba, if Deontay Wilder has still got the belt, he would be a guy who is potentially up to that level for a title shot remains to be seen but yeah just wanted to wade in with a few extra thoughts on this and yeah this it's been a really interesting sort of 24 hours with this um sort of whole story breaking and evolving and you know Deontay Wilder seemingly open to potentially fighting on ESPN whether that comes to pass or not that's another story whether this goes to a purse bit it's another story we'll have to see what happens whether the rematch happens at all it's one thing being in a stronger negotiating position at this point but if the fight doesn't come off well so what he's still got the deal after all so who knows where they could go if it's not Deontay Wilder and the same for Wilder what do you make of it all drop a comment loud and often hit like hit subscribe follow me on twitter boxing underscore squared I'm out